Welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric and we are going to model a champagne glass. I'm going to go to the internet and look for a reference image. I'm going to google.com see champagne glass. Go to images and just find an image here to work with. Let's do this one here. There we go. I'm going to right click, save the picture to my desktop. Let's go back into Maya. I'm going to go in my toolbox over here on the left hand side. I'm going to click on the four panel view layout. I'm going to go to my, put my cursor over my front view down here at the bottom left and press the space bar. That will maximize that view into a single panel. Now we need to import our image. So I'm going to go to View, down to Image Plane, over to Import Image. I'm going to click that, and now I'm going to navigate to my desktop and look for the picture. There it is, Champagne Glass. I'm going to open. Now we have our reference image. What we're going to do is we're going to create a curve, and a line, that's going to follow the outline of this Champagne Glass. And then once we do that, we're going to take that line, and we're going to revolve it around the y-axis and that will create our glass. So let's go to the create menu. I'm going to go down to CV curve tool. I'm going to click that. Now we want our line to start and stop on this center line because that center line is going to be the center of our revolve. If we don't start on that line, let's say we started further over to the right and we revolved around, there would actually be a gap, a space, so we'd have a hole going through the center of our glass and we don't want that. So Let's start outlining our glass. Now, I'm going to press and hold down the letter X on my keyboard. That way I can snap to that center line. Now I'm going to let go of the X on my keyboard and I'm just going to start clicking. Start following the shape of this glass on the outside. Let's go up. Now, up here towards the top, I'm going to make my points a little closer together. That way, it forms the uh, curve better. Now, I'm going to go down the inside of the glass. I'm going to press the letter X again, snap it to this center line. I'm going to press the enter button. Now I'm going to right click on the line, select control vertex, and now I'm going to grab that last vertex and move it down because we don't want it right there on the point. So I'm going to move it down to where it needs to be. And I'm going to press the letter or the F8 button on my keyboard to go to object mode. And I actually had to press it twice. Now we're done with this image, so I want to get rid of it. I'm going to go back up to view, down the image plane, over to image plane attributes. I'm going to click on this image plane one and then press the delete button. So I'm going to click and now I'm going to press the delete button on my keyboard and it gets rid of our image. I'm going to go to a perspective view so you can see what's going on a little better. I'm going to go and get rid of this grid. There we go. I'm going to select the curve. I'm going to go up to my shelf. I'm going to click on the Surfaces tab. And there is a button, an icon for Revolve. I clicked it, and now, as you can see, our curve revolved around in a circle, creating our glass. So I'm going to go to Shaded Mode by pressing the number 5 on my keyboard. Now, right now, let me show you. I'm going to move this cup out of the way. Our curve is still there, but it's attached to our glass. If I right-click the curve again and select Control Vertex, I can grab vertexes. And as you can see, it changes the shape of our glass. It's still connected. And it's actually a good way if you wanted to change the shape of your cup, you could actually just start grabbing some vertices and doing what you wanted to with it. So let me undo that. I want to separate the connection between these, so I'm going to select my glass. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu. 
I go down to delete by type and click on history. So that deletes the history and separates those two. So if I go back to control vertex, it's not connected anymore. So I'm going to delete my curve and we are ready to do a render. But before we render, let's add some, let's kind of spice it up a little bit so it's not too dull. I'm going to create a plane, kind of mimic a tabletop. I'm going to go back into a front view, lower that down to where a tabletop would actually be, and make it a little bigger. There we go. I'm going to go to my render settings. Up on my status line, there is an icon. I'm going to click that, open up my render settings. Under this drop down box, I'm going to switch it to mental ray, which is not in there. So I need to go to my Windows menu, down to settings, preferences, to plugin manager. That will allow me to turn on mental ray. And there it is, Maya to Mental Ray, M-A-Y-A-T-O-M-R dot M-L-L. -L. I'm going to click Loaded, which actually loads it. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Auto Load. That way, next time I open up Maya, Mental Ray should load up too. I'm going to click Refresh. Everything's good. Close it out. Now I'm going to go back into my Render Settings. And there's our Mental Ray back in our list now. All right, now that it's on Mental Ray, I'm going to close that out.